Hey everyone, this is Turd Flinging Monkey. So on December 1st, Black Pigeon Speaks released a video called MGTOW and the Cancer of Porn on Society. Now I've started responding to anti-MGTOW videos, and what's interesting is I really like Black Pigeon Speaks' channel. I've recommended it in the past. I certainly don't agree with everything he says, including points he makes in this video, which I'll be talking about. But for the most part, I like his channel and his content. And I'm going to talk to him from one talking animal to another. I'm not here to pick a fight or talk shit and try to start YouTube drama. I truly think that you are just simply misguided. And my hope is that you thoughtfully listen to this video. Now while Black Pigeon Speaks only mentions MGTOW almost in passing towards the end of his video, he features it prominently in the title of the video, which is a little bit odd, but whatever. Most of his video is about porn. How porn is bad for you and how you shouldn't watch porn. This isn't exactly a new argument. Yeah, porn can be addicting, but anything can be addicting. Sugar can be addicting. Exercise can be addicting. You know, if you're addicted to something and it's unhealthy, then yeah, you should stop doing it. But if you're not addicted to it, if you handle it, if it's not negatively impacting your life, then what's the problem? If you take this video and simply replace the word porn with sugar, you see how unreasonable the video is towards porn. I watch porn. I jerk off like someone bet me that I couldn't. But it doesn't negatively impact my life. Now, are there people who watch porn and it does negatively impact their life? Absolutely. There are those who eat too much sugar and it negatively impacts their life. There are actual diseases like type 2 diabetes. The worst that's going to happen with watching too much porn is you're going to get like erectile dysfunction because normal women aren't going to turn you on. But honestly, all things in moderation. There are people who take health and fitness to the extreme. People could take anything that's good and blow it out of proportion. Maybe they become addicted to it. Maybe they just take it too far and it causes unhealthy consequences in their life. Porn is no different. It's not better or worse than anything else that's potentially addictive. What porn actually does is it provides an alternative to men to satiate their sexual urges without having to engage with women. And in my opinion, that is what your problem is with porn. It's not that it's addicting. It's not that it causes any negative consequences. It's that it gives men an escape to dealing with women. They have somewhere else to go to satiate their sex drive other than women. And the reason why you're concerned about this is because you see what I see. You see the demographic winter in the West. You see Western civilization not having enough kids. You see the breakdown of the family. Me and you see the same problem. But me and you have come to very different diagnoses of what the problem actually is. You see, your concern with the family, the nuclear family, Western civilization, fertility, it all boils down to the perspective of women. You are centered on or concerned exclusively with women. And this is the definition of a word that MGTOW use all the time called gynocentrism. Now the thing about gynocentrism is it just causes intelligent people to turn their brains off. Now I can tell by your videos you're well versed in politics and stuff like that. So I'm going to assume you've gotten some education in economics. So I'm going to approach this from an economic perspective. And hopefully you can understand what the problem is after I explain it to you using economic principles. Okay, so this first slide describes the effect of a price floor. Now what a price floor is, it's when the government decides that a good or service is worth more than it actually would be in the free market. So for example, if people are only willing to pay a dollar for a certain good or service, but there's a law passed that you can't charge less than $5 for that good or service, that creates a price floor which is higher than the market price. Fewer people are going to be interested in buying that good or service for that higher price, it's also going to send mixed signals to suppliers. They're going to oversupply that good or service, expecting to make more money, and nobody's going to be buying it because there's going to be low demand. This is going to create excess supply. Now, how does this relate to gynocentric traditionalism? Well, if you approach marriage and relationships from an economic perspective, the deal between men and women hasn't really changed much. The man is offering to provide the woman with resources and protection. The woman offers the man sex. Children happen, families happen, and the race flourishes and spreads. It's not just like this in humans, it's like this in animals throughout the animal kingdom. The woman seeks a man to provide resources and protection, and the man looks for a woman to provide sex and children. These are all instinctual, subconscious desires. Now, over the last hundred years or so, women have been liberated at the expense of men. However, the man's responsibilities haven't changed. The man is still expected to provide for women, but the woman doesn't have to provide anything in return. For example, and as you can see in the chart I've detailed this, the man is financially responsible for women, children, 
regardless of whether or not the relationship lasts. If you have a child with a woman and she decides to leave you, you are still financially responsible for that child. Now that's not what happens in nature. If the female ape takes her babies and leaves the male ape, the male ape isn't required to provide bananas every month. You only see that in humans. This raises the price of that relationship. Because the woman can just pull the lever, collect her cash and prizes and leave, and the man is still on the hook. He still has to maintain his financial responsibility to the woman, beyond the point that the relationship ends. The woman has an option to provide, but no obligation to provide sex and children. The woman can decide she doesn't want kids. She can have abortions. She can cut the man off from sex. Just say, we're not having sex ever again. There's nothing you can do about it. He can't go to a judge and say, judge, she won't have sex with me. A man has no right to demand sex from his wife, but the wife has a right to demand money from her husband. During the marriage, if the man decides, I'm not supporting you anymore, I'm not giving you any money, she can go to a court and file abuse charges because the man isn't providing for her needs. And of course, after the divorce, the woman could demand money in the form of alimony and child support. So the man has all these legal responsibilities to provide for a woman, even beyond when the relationship is over. And the woman has no responsibilities to the man. She used to, but those have all been taken away over the last hundred years or so. They've all been taken away. You've stripped a man of his authority, but you've given him additional responsibility. This has drastically raised the price. This has created a price floor for marriage and long-term relationships. And when you create a price floor, when the price is higher than the market value, you're going to create excess supply. Now the effect of this excess supply takes two forms. You have MGTOW on the male side. These are men who have made the cost-benefit analysis of marriage and long-term relationships and have determined that they're not worth it. They're overpriced. And on the supply side, you have women wondering where all the good men have gone. So the problem is the price floor. This price floor is called gynocentrism. Now as an alternative to a gynocentric traditionalist society, wherein the man has disproportionate responsibility and little to no authority, is what I would call a balanced patriarchy. Now in a balanced patriarchy, there's mutual benefit. The man benefits from the relationship too. I know that's crazy. I know the fact that a man should actually benefit from a relationship with a woman is just completely out of line, but just, just go on a journey with me for a moment. In a free market, like in animals, animals don't have government or marriage or divorce or lawyers. They have nothing. They still form families and have children. Why? Because both parties come together if and only if there is mutual benefit to both parties. They only stay together if and only if both parties continue to mutually benefit each other. If the woman becomes a burden to the man, he'll cut her loose. If the man becomes a burden to a woman, she'll leave. Now, of course, it doesn't protect the woman. And because gynocentrism is so rampant in our society, that's all people care about. Nobody cares if the man benefits in the marriage or the long-term relationship. They, nobody cares, and that's the problem. When men aren't benefiting and nobody cares, men stop taking that shitty deal. They realize it's a bad deal, they stop taking it. Now in a balanced patriarchy, removing the price floor of gynocentrism, you would have authority based on responsibility. Because men are going to be by default responsible for women, because women have babies. They're going to be dependent on men one way or another. And because of this, men are going to be responsible for women. Fair enough. Men should have authority commensurate with their responsibility. They should be in charge of their women and their children and their families. That's the way it used to be. Has a long track record of success. And while this seems horribly oppressive to women, it's actually fair for both parties. While the woman doesn't have all the freedom she might enjoy in today's modern feminist society, She's being taken care of and provided for by her husband, or her family, or whatever. Her needs are being met. And the man is actually benefiting from this arrangement, because while he may be more responsible, while he may have to financially provide for this woman and her children, he is benefiting because he's in charge. He has that assurance that these children aren't going to be taken away from him. He's not going to be made a wage slave to his ex-wife. These are his children. This is his family. This actually creates a healthy dynamic where the man protects and provides for his family, but enjoys authority over said family. Everybody benefits in this scenario. Now just to discuss the opposite of the price ceiling is the price floor. This is what would occur under what I call a hard patriarchy. This is when things go a little bit too far. This is what you see in a lot of ancient primitive cultures. So they are androcentric, 
because the men who you know do all the things basically demand that they have authority and respect in that society. You're going to have a lot of war and slavery. The men who lose these wars are going to be killed. The women are going to be taken as war brides and concubines by the victors. There's going to be fewer women to go around, which causes the men to fight each other for the remaining women. The average man does not benefit under this system. All right, so now let's talk about porn. Porn is a substitute good for sex with a woman. It lowers the price of sex. By providing a substitute good, it provides an alternative to sex. And that's why people, such as yourself, are against porn. Because you want men to continue to marry women and have children because Western civilization needs babies, white people need babies. All right, I get that. But after explaining the situation, the problem isn't porn. It's not alternatives. Now, on this slide, I'm showing how blaming porn would work, how it would accomplish what you want by screwing men, essentially. Your motive for blaming porn is to once again put the responsibility onto men. Men need to cut out their porn watching. Men need to marry these women, no matter how gynocentric society is, no matter how much feminists have liberated them, no matter how much their authority has been stripped away. Men just need to keep marrying these women so they can have babies. All that matters is having babies. Your future, your money, your life, your dreams, your freedom, none of those matter. Have babies. Because if you don't have babies, Western civilization is going to collapse. Instead of blaming gynocentrism for men walking away from women, you're blaming the alternative such as porn. You're trying to shame men into making the bad deal instead of making the deal fair to men. If you remove gynocentrism and you bring society back to a balanced patriarchy, men would get married. Men would have long-term relationships with women. Even within MGTOW, there are people like Sam, Man, and myself who have talked about asexual technologies, such as the artificial womb and cloning and so forth. A lot of people in MGTOW look forward to the day where they can go to a laboratory and have a child without a woman. Not because we hate women, but because we want control over our families. If you have a child with a woman, even a surrogate, she can go to court, claim the child as her own, and sue you for child support. There's nothing you can do about it. So, I mean, just think about that. If MGTOW were so anti-family, we wouldn't be talking about these technologies that could potentially allow a man to have a child without a woman, but what would cost hundreds of thousands, if not even millions of dollars. These are not going to be cheap technologies. But they're the only way in this modern society for a man to have a reasonable expectation that he can keep his children, that he won't be made a wage slave to some woman. That is the problem. The problem isn't porn. The problem is gynocentrism. It has made long-term relationships, and marriage especially, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to the average man anymore. He derives no benefit. In fact, Willy Wonka, what benefits does a man get from marriage? Nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Now I want to close with a few slides which are taken from project management and various business educational courses. And they describe the relationship between a manager and a subordinate using responsibility and authority in tandem flowing from the manager to the subordinate and accountability flowing from the subordinate to the manager. Anybody in business will tell you, you have to have responsibility and authority together. You can't separate them. You can't make one party responsible and a different party have authority. It doesn't work. The dynamic breaks down. That is exactly what we've done with men and women. Now in a healthy patriarchal society, the man has responsibility and authority over the woman. The woman is accountable to the man. But both their needs are met. This is a mutually beneficial relationship. Now the problem is once you add government to this mix. Government now has authority over men and women. It demands accountability from the man to the government in the form of taxation and various laws to support women. Because women can vote and because of the majority of voters... Politicians have to constantly pander for the female vote, and the easiest way to do that is to expand females' freedoms at the expense of men's authority. It also enforces women's authority over men. And again, at the bottom of the chart, it just goes down to the fact that women could demand that a man maintain the responsibility over her while providing nothing in return. So women are entitled to provision by men. This is either individual men, husbands, babies, daddies, etc., or collective men, taxpayers, in the form of welfare. Women owe nothing to men in exchange. Women have no obligation to provide sex for children. Women can cheat and still be provided for after divorce. The fact that she cheated on you, the fact that she broke her marital vows doesn't mean shit anymore. It used to, it doesn't mean it anymore. Women can even sperm jack or rape a man 
and receive child support from their male victims. I've actually used two news articles demonstrating that exact point. There was a dentist, woman gave him a blowjob, injected the sperm into herself after he left by spinning it into a cup and saving it for a few minutes. She got pregnant, has to pay child support. A woman had sex with a 13-year-old boy, statutory rape, got pregnant, waited until he turned 18, sued him for child support. Sued her rape victim for child support. This is how gynocentric our society is. It doesn't give a shit about men. And that is why men are walking away from marriage. It's not porn. It's not even really women per se. It's not that women are better or worse than they've ever been. Women are basically the same as they've always been. It is society that has changed. It has become so gynocentric. It has created a price floor on relationships. It's not worth it anymore. As Barbarossa is fond of saying, the juice is not worth the squeeze. And that's not porn. It's women. It's society. And if you don't see that, if you're blaming porn and not gynocentrism, or if you are gynocentric, then you're actually the problem. Instead of blaming porn, think about what you're going to do to make the deal fair to men. This is Turd Flinging Monkey. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.